Hi everyone, my name is Brett Drummond. I'm one of the co-founders of MS Translate and I'm excited to be here with you today to talk about another multiple sclerosis research summary. This time we're gonna be talking about diet and MS. But before I get started, uh, if you do like the MS Translate videos, make sure that you click the subscribe button below this video to make sure that you stay up to date with all of the video content that we are producing. We're gonna be releasing new research summary videos every week across 2022. So do subscribe to our channel. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about a recently published study that compared two common diets that are used for multiple sclerosis, the Swank diet and the Wiles diet. So before we start talking about those, let's talk about diet and multiple sclerosis in general. So diet has been something that's been looked at as a way of managing the symptoms of multiple sclerosis for quite a while now. And there's been a lot of anecdotal evidence from people living with MS to say that this has a number of benefits for them. However, there's always been a push to try and test this scientifically and to do clinical trials to get a better understanding of exactly what sort of diet is going to provide the most benefit for people living with multiple sclerosis. And so this is one of the first studies to have done that. Now, this study was funded by the National Multiple Sclerosis Society in the US and was run out of the University of Iowa by a team led by Dr. Terry Wiles, the inventor of the Wiles diet. Now, if you're interested in hearing more about the Wiles diet in general, we did an interview with Dr. Terry Wiles a while back now, but you can view the links to both of those videos in the comments uh, below this, uh, in the description, sorry, of this video, and you can watch those that those videos. They're very interesting, uh, and Terry goes into depth uh, with some of the background behind her diet and how she came up with it. But so in this study, they had uh, a number of people living with relapsing or remitting multiple sclerosis, and they were randomized to either uh, go on to the Wiles protocol or to go on to the Swank protocol. Now, I won't go into details about the differences between these two diets in this video, but if that is something that you would like us to create content on, please do comment below, uh, and I'll be happy to create a separate video on that. Basically, the Wiles diet is a modified paleolithic diet, whereas the Swank diet is based on having a low saturated fat diet. So they looked at these people with this dietary intervention over a period of time uh, and looked to see what benefits they derived. And what they found was that people on both diets saw an improvement in fatigue, statistically significant improvement in fatigue from the start of the study to the end of that dietary intervention. And they also saw an improved quality of life. Now, those probably go hand in hand. We know that fatigue is one of the most common symptoms of multiple sclerosis and one of the symptoms that people with MS report as being the one that has the biggest impact on their daily life. So it makes sense that if fatigue is improving, then we would see quality of life improving as well. Now, there may be other factors apart from fatigue that also contributed to that, but that does indicate um, or it does suggest that, that fatigue may have also been playing a role there. So these are really important benefits for, for people living with MS. One of the things that we know, having listened to the MS Translate community, that they like about lifestyle modifications and research into lifestyle modifications is that they're presenting answers that can provide help now. And they can provide help to improve the daily quality of life for people living with MS. That's not to say that other research isn't important as well, looking at potential causes of multiple sclerosis, such as the EBV content that we've been publishing recently, or other treatment options uh, that are coming out. That research is important. But what people living with MS have told us is that they like things like diet because it gives them some control over their disease and something with MS, which is filled with such uncertainty, being able to take control and do something yourself um, that may have benefits to helping manage the disease uh, is something that people feel really passionately about. So it's fantastic to see that this research is being done and fantastic to see that both of these dietary interventions uh, produced benefits for the people living with MS involved in the study. Now, there was some suggestion that perhaps there was some extra benefit to taking the Wiles diet over the Swank diet, but this was minor. Um, and importantly, I guess that both diets produced 
uh, benefits. And in talking about that, uh, one of the things to keep in mind then is not, not necessarily looking at the differences be between the diets, but looking in terms of what similarities they have. And so I guess in terms of similarities, they both uh, look to increase the vegetable intake as part of the diet. They both look to reduce sugar as part of the diet. And they both do also include uh, increases in dietary fiber and both include some targeted nutritional supplementation. So there are some similarities and maybe we need to look more at those to see what about those might be creating the benefits. So in terms of ongoing work for this, um, I know that uh, there are suggestions out of the University of Iowa that now off the back of these results, they wanna do a larger um, trial to really expand what they're seeing with this and also include some MRI measurements in that to see whether or not it's just not just symptoms that are being improved through these diets, but actually whether or not it's having any impact on disease progression as well. Now, I know when I've talked about this previously, uh, especially on our Facebook channel, there were some questions around how much can we trust a study like this, considering the creator of one of the diets is one of the lead researchers on the study. Now, as we always talk about with, with research, that's certainly a valid question to look in terms of whether or not there would be any bias associated with this. But having looked at the paper myself, um, I can say that there are a number of met, uh, parts of the methods that were in there to reduce bias. Um, and also, I think what we need to keep in mind is that this was published in uh, a peer international peer reviewed journal. So this has gone out to a number of other researchers in the area who have reviewed the publication and approved it. Um, so that gives us confidence uh, that the, the science and the research involved is legitimate and we can trust the results that have been generated there. So what are our conclusions for this? Well, I really think that this is one of the first things that we've seen in terms of some published literature looking at this in a trial sort of setting that really does show that dietary intervention um, or the use of diet can be a really beneficial way to um, manage some of the symptoms of multiple sclerosis. In terms of the specifics and how there is there a specific diet that people should be following um, to get the most benefits for them, I don't think we're at the stage yet where we can say that. As I said, the results from this study showed that both the SWANK and the WILES protocols uh, led to benefits. But I think uh, in general, what we might be able to say, this is really just me sharing my thoughts here, is that obviously eating a healthy, balanced diet um, is always going to be beneficial for all of us, um, but also people living with multiple sclerosis. We know that people living with multiple sclerosis are at an increased risk of other comorbidities such as cardiovascular disease. So eating a healthy diet can be one way not only to help manage multiple sclerosis symptoms, but to reduce the risks of those other comorbidities. In terms of finding the diet that works for you, I guess that's really just a personal, a personal thing and working through some of these things to find you know, what uh, eliminating what things may provide benefits to you and what other things you wanna eat more of. As always, any sorts of changes to any of these things should be discussed. Um, with your healthcare professional or with a dietitian in this interest in this instance. If you do have any questions about this research, please do comment below and I will do my best to respond to all of those questions as quickly as possible. We will be back with other research summaries in the near future. Thank you again for supporting everything we do. Remember to click subscribe and click like on the video uh, and we look forward to talking to you soon. Thanks everyone.